It's been an up and down week for both advocates and opponents of laws restricting gun buyers by age. On Monday in Texas, where there were two mass murders this month in the space of a week, a House committee unexpectedly passed a bill to raise the age for buying a semi-automatic rifle from 18 to 21. But the legislation has stalled and is now unlikely to get a vote in the full House. And on Wednesday, a judge in Virginia struck down federal laws barring gun dealers from selling handguns to anyone younger than 21. The Justice Department is likely to appeal that ruling, which does not affect either state laws or private gun sales. Lisa Geller is the director of state affairs at the Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Violence Solutions. Lisa, there are eight states that, that have age restrictions, uh, uh, fairly tight age restrictions for buying any kind of firearm, any, any firearm at all. Do we have an expense sense of what it tells us about whether it, it, it helps or not? We do. So as you mentioned, there are several states that have raised the age to 21 to buy certain firearms, some cases all firearms. And what we know, stepping back, is that the 18 to 20 year old period is a extremely high risk time for teenagers. We know that arrests for murders are highest among this age group. We also know that policies in states to restrict gun purchases to those 18 to 20 have lower rates of gun suicide. So we do know that protecting those under 21 from buying guns is backed by evidence and keeps youth safe. The two recent shootings, or last year rather, uh, the Uvalde shooting the, and the, the shooting at the uh, Buffalo supermarket, both cases the shooters were teenagers who bought uh, their weapons legally. Do you believe that an age limit would have helped in those cases? I do believe that. I think there are a number of other situations we can point to, notably the Sandy Hook shooter and the Parkland shooter, who also bought their guns legally shortly after turning 18. And we know that if there were a law in place to restrict that purchase until they were 21, they wouldn't have been able to buy guns just at the time period that they did and carry out the mass harm that they did. What's the significance, do you think, of the, uh, the, the ruling in Virginia striking down the federal law uh, that restricted handgun sales uh, to people 21 and over? Well, as you noted, this is federal law. Federal law states that you have to be 21 years old to buy a handgun from a licensed dealer. So the Department of Justice has already indicated that they're going to appeal this. I don't want to be an alarmist here because this is just one district court judge, one federal judge ruling that this law is unconstitutional. Um, it does not apply yet to residents of Virginia, so I don't want to state that this is going to go into effect immediately, even if the higher court does um, agree with the lower court. But we know that this is dangerous. This goes against the will of the people. In fact, even a Fox News poll from just a couple weeks ago found that 81% of people are in favor of raising the age to 21 to buy all guns. And we also know that guns are the leading cause of death for teenagers. So doing this and, and issuing this kind of dangerous decision at a time when guns are killing teens more than any other means is extremely dangerous and not consistent with what we see in the data. But this ruling do also doesn't apply to private gun sales. So someone 18 to 20 could buy a gun uh, from a private dealer in the parking lot of a licensed dealer, but he couldn't go inside. I mean, is that sort of a, a problem that you'd like to see closed in the law? There are too many loopholes in our gun laws. Just as you indicated, this does not apply to private sales. At Johns Hopkins, at the Center for Gun Violence Solutions, we believe that there should be universal background checks on all gun sales. We believe that the, the age um, to buy guns should be raised for all gun sales because it really doesn't make sense that someone can't go into a federally licensed firearms dealer at 18 and buy a gun. But as you indicated, they can have a gun given to them as a gift in some states or they can buy it through a private transaction. So absolutely, this law should be, um, should be amended and loopholes should be closed to keep people safe. You mentioned earlier the link uh, with suicide, and obviously uh, gunshot deaths is, a, uh, I think, the leading cause of death uh, among children now. Is there any evidence of a link between states where it's easier to get a gun and higher rates of suicide? The biggest predictor of a suicide is access to a firearm. We know that 90% of suicide attempts with a firearm are fatal whereas only two to 3% of suicide attempts with non-firearm means are lethal. So if there's anything you take away from this, from this um, conversation, it's that guns are the reason why suicides are so high in this country. We know that putting time and space between someone and a firearm purchase 
is the best way to save their life. And that goes for children, but also adults. And we also know that many mass shooters, particularly these young mass shooters, may be suicidal. And when they are carrying out this mass shooting, they're also at the end taking their own life. So I do believe that mass shooting prevention also has to include suicide prevention. You know, after the uh, mass shooting in Texas last week, we heard the uh, governor of Texas come out and when asked about tougher gun laws, talked about more mental health services. Is that, I mean, they make it sound like it's one or the other. Is that a false dichotomy? We absolutely need more mental health care in this country, but there's no way to address gun violence in this country without addressing the gun. Data shows that only about 4% of violence in this country can be directly linked to mental illness. So even if we were able to prevent every single individual living with mental illness from buying a gun, we would not see meaningful reductions in violence and even more specifically in gun violence. So I would never say that a, a shooter is mentally well, but that does not mean that they are mentally ill. Lisa Geller of the Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Violence Solutions, thank you very much. Thank you for having me.